Welcome back everybody. Thanks for tuning in this Monday. Uh, today we're going to go over one of my favorite baits and personally to me, I think it's the world's best catfish bait. So uh, stick around and I'll show you what I'm working with. Welcome back everybody. Thanks for tuning in today for Monday. Um, I want to share with you the world's best catfish bait to me. Now, I know some of y'all may not agree with this. This is a very controversial bait in the catfish community right now. I mean, there's a lot of love for it. And there's a lot of hate for it. But uh, you can't argue when you're catching your PB blue on chicken breast and anise right there. Yeah, I caught that on a piece of chicken breast, no bigger than my thumb. And I had people with me when I caught it. Uh, if y'all seen in my previous videos, uh, it's a video or two back where I went to Avid's meet and greet. I fished the Kaskaskia River in Illinois. It's a great little river. Um, we had fresh shad that day. We had fresh get jack. We had bluegill. I did catch a 27 pound blue or 27 or 28 pound blue on a bluegill head. But the Annie's and the bluegill head dominated the fresh shad and dominated the uh, fresh skip jack. So, you know, and we even, I even caught a flathead on freaking Nightcrawler. I mean, come on. I mean, what is always that? But anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, this is what I use on my chicken breast. This is what landed me my new PB Blue. It is called Annie's Extract. Pure Annie's, not. It's pure, okay? You want this brand if you can get it. Uh, Kroger sells it as well. It's not that bad. Um, I prefer the McCormick. It's just a little bit stronger smell. and does not take very much at all. So let me show you what the bottle looks like here. That's what the bottle looks like. You can get this in the spice. It's usually around the in the spice aisle at Walmart. Uh, I think it's three ninety nine for its little bottle. But this little bottle will last you a lot. I mean, it does not take much at all for this to work. Um, it smells like black licorice. If you've got a grandma or grandpa that's got black licorice candy around, get a big whiff of it. That's what this smells like. And uh, for some of y'all weekend party of goers, um, nothing wrong with that. It also smells like Jägermeister. It also smells like straight up Jägermeister. So be careful when you're using this when you're fishing. You don't want this all over you or your hands when you're driving. Because if you get pulled over, they're going to take your straight up partying. You know, you don't need that, especially after a, if you had a rough day of fishing. So uh, let me get down to cutting this chicken breast up and I'll show you how I get this all set up. All right, everybody. First step you want to do is get a good old cutting board here need a good cutting board this is the one I use for all my cutting my baits on here in the house wife will not let me use her really nice one so this is my personal one for cutting up bait and stuff so let me get down to getting the chicken breast out and I'll show you how I get down to cutting it all right now here's my choice of chicken breast now as you can see here this is very very thick chicken breast I mean it is thick still a little froze there uh, this chicken breast here, Walmart usually has on sale on Sunday evenings or Sunday mornings. You can get this chicken breast for like 40 to 50 cent a pound on the chicken breast. When they're about to go get up, get too old where they can't sell, they go on sale. I got a bunch of it. I buy a lot of it sometimes because I use it for bait. I'm not going to eat chicken breast that's about to expire in a day. No, I'm going to use it for bait. Uh, let me get my knife here real quick and we'll get to cutting. All right, got my knives here. I got my custom made knives here. Uh, I won this at uh, Upper at Avids. Uh, if you would like a knife, custom made knife, uh, be sure to let me know. Uh, I'll get you onto the right person for these. Uh, here is this one. And I had him make this one especially for me. This is like a little chopper knife. And it is just awesome. Look how beautiful it is. Homemade. This beautiful got a nice little edge on it. This is what we're going to use to cut. This is what we're going to use here to cut our chicken breast up with. Uh, let me forget the Annie's. Definitely don't want to forget the Annie's. Uh, let me get this here going. All right, so it's really straightforward. There's really no wrong way of doing this, but I like cutting mine into chunks, you know, no bigger than that. So as you can see, this knife is just amazing. It cuts it like butter. Uh, I'm not even. I'm not even putting no pressure on it, and it just slices it like butter. Um, after you get to a certain way of the chicken breast, I like cutting it down the middle here. 
because we don't need real, real big pieces, you know. So, and just cut it into little small pieces. That's all you have to do. Cut it into the desired size you want. I mean, you can use real big chunks like that, but usually it doesn't require that much. Now, if you think bigger bait catches bigger fish, then by all means, use big bait. Cut it up in half like this and throw one that big. But I like mine about like that. That right there is my ideal size. It's great for channel cats. It's great for uh, any catfish in general that's hungry and look for a quick snack. All right, now that we got that cut up, let me get a Ziploc bag. I wanted to make sure I showed you all the sizes of the chicken breast I cut up. Now, these are pretty good sized chunks. I'm not going to lie. These are typically a little bit bigger than I normally choose to cut up. But I figured for this video purpose, why not? So, uh, let me get to finding those Ziploc bags real quick, and we'll get them added to the Ziploc bag. All right, now that we uh, got a good old Ziploc bag here. Now, I prefer to use a Ziploc bag. Now, you can use other storage uh, ways. You can use uh, Walmart sells uh, nice little bows. It's got lids that screw on. Those are real awesome. Some of y'all have seen those in my live videos before. Uh, those work really good as well. Um, but all you're going to do here now is take the chicken breast. And, yeah, you, you already know what's going on. You already know. Um... Just throw it in the bag. That's all you gotta do. Um, and word of advice, uh, make sure you wash your hands after you're done. Um, a lot of people think just because you're using chicken breast raw when you're fishing, you're gonna catch salmonella. That is not always the case. The chicken, in order to catch that, using raw chicken breast, is the chicken has to have has to be exposed to salmonella. It has to contain it in order for you to catch it. Chicken doesn't automatically come with salmonella. Only certain times, if, if it's exposed to it, or is it not properly cooled or stored, you know, then you got a chance of catching it if the chicken has it. Now, if the chicken don't have it, you're fine. You know, I've been using chicken breasts for 15 years, guys. I've eaten with chicken, raw chicken breasts left over on my hands, not thinking. And for 15 years, I'm doing fine. I'm still here. So, I'm going to continue hammering and going about how I do it because I've not changed that in 15 years. Um, I do wash my hands uh, when I get a chance because it's for safety reasons. But uh, don't stress out, you know. Uh, also, you can pack a thing of hand, uh, hand uh, uh, crap. I mean, everybody's got them. The uh, hand sanitizer around with you if you'd like. But me, I just wash my hands in the water, the river, or lake, and just hammer on. Now, once you got it here in your Ziploc bag, I just want to get that out there. Sorry. Uh, after you've got it in your Ziploc bag, all you got to do, it does not take much at all. You literally just pour a little bit in it. And, I mean, that's hardly any. It's maybe two capfuls of this that I just poured in. Okay. And let me show you what it does to the chicken after you get it all mixed up. Mix it up a little bit. And it does not take much, boys and girls. Not much at all. And... Look at that. You see how, how, see how it turns that chicken kind of white, gives it like a white filmy texture to it? That's, that is the, and he's working on the chicken breast. It's sitting there, it adds like a, a white film to the chicken, okay? Now the good thing, now the good thing about this chicken breast is it's ready. I can go fish with it right now. There's nothing else I need to do to it. Now, if you want to keep it for a long period of time, use it two or three trips, you may want to pack some ice and a cooler with you. The cooler you keep this chicken, the better it's going to perform. Uh, yes, I've caught chicken, I've caught catfish on warm chicken before and hot chicken. But the smell is really more potent when it's cooler. And the chicken just stays on the hook better and performs better when it's cooler. Um, I've taken stuff, I've taken chicken out before and fished with it two or three trips and kept it on ice. And then after it starts getting a little bit of smell, I toss it. You know, once it starts getting some kind of funky smell to it, I mean, it's already not going to smell pleasant as it is. But if it starts getting like a rotten smell to it, I trash it. It's garbage. It's gone. Uh, another, Also, another good thing is when you get this made up, you can stick this directly in your freezer and it would hold for however long you want to use this. You know, I've had chicken breasts in the freezer all winter. You know, I start, sometimes I'll start bagging it up in about October, end of October, beginning of November. 
And I'll get me quite a few of these bags full and also just a smaller bag for a small trip. So I know I'm not going to be fishing that very long. And when I want to go fishing the next day, I'll pull it out, set it on the counter, leave it in the sink overnight, let it thaw out, or just stick it in the refrigerator. But if you're sticking the refrigerator, make sure you do it ahead or two days ahead of time. Give it enough time to thaw out properly. And then next thing you know, you're off to fishing. There's nothing special else you have to do. I mean, it's just a great versatile bait, and I love it. I love it. All right, there you have it. World's greatest catfish bait. What do you think about it? To me, I think it is. Uh, for plenty of reasons why I can go all day about it. Uh, for one, it's available in any Walmart, any Kroger's. You can pick up both items at any store, any world, anywhere in the world, just about. Uh, well, here in the United States, I don't know about China and stuff. But um, it, it, it's, not, it's not expensive. It's cheap. The chicken breast, it's hard to throw off. It's versatile. You can catch catfish on it, blues, channels, flatheads. I've caught flatheads, blues, and channel cats on it. Don't get me wrong. I've not caught a lot of flatheads on it. But I've caught a buttload of channel cats and blues on it. Um, you can take it to creeks. You can take it to rivers. You can take it to lakes. You can fish it bottom. You can fish it top. You can drag it, suspend it. You can bump it. You can add other stuff to it. You can add Kool-Aid to it. Chicken breast to me is... The world's greatest catfish bait. I mean, it's versatile, it's cheap, it's easy to do. Anybody can make it, anybody can use it. Um, and it's just an all-around great bait. Now, I know there's going to be some hate on this, and that's okay. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Certain areas of the United States, and rivers, lakes, streams, is going to be different for what baits that work best. But to me, in my area, this works great for me. I go to Ohio River, I do really good on it. I go to the Kentucky River, I do really good on it. As long as the turtles ain't laying around, then I do pretty good on it. Uh, lakes, ponds, dude, it's the lakes, it's killer. You get in a cove, it's got some rocky structure to it or some sand. Man, watch out. Uh, same thing with the cherry chicken breast. Uh, I did a video a while back of testing the cherry chicken breast Kool-Aid, and it just dominated the catfish. I even caught trout on it. Uh, but that's going to be my video for today. Uh, let me know in the comments below if uh, what's your favorite catfish bait. Um, what's your world's best catfish bait to you? But to me, this is my this is the world's greatest catfish bait to me. I'm sorry, I don't care what anybody says. But um, that's gonna be it for her today, and I'll catch y'all later. Bye, y'all.